raised in church I came fresh out of the world to Jesus and when I think back of how ignorant I was you could have handed me a Bible and said turn to Genesis I would have been at a complete loss and uh, when, when I think of how carnal and how ignorant I was and how the Lord put up with me and Sally put up with me while I grew up I just thank it, thank him that he didn't let go. Hallelujah. And he's not going to let go of you. May I have an amen? Let's thank him for never letting go. Father, we thank you. We give you all praise, all honor, all glory. Thank you for never leaving, never forsaking us, for helping us in every situation healing us of sickness and disease, providing every need, protecting our lives, Father. We give you all praise, all honor, and all glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody say glory to God. Why don't you point at somebody and say, the Lord is good. We'll be seated in His presence. Good 
evening. How is everybody? Good, good. Welcome to Friday Night Live. Yes, yes. Good to see everybody. Yes, yes. Well, welcome, welcome. Do we have any first-time visitors with us tonight? Wave or stand? Yes, wonderful. Welcome. Welcome. Well, we are so glad you've joined us. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, and everybody out there in internet land, TV land, in Sarasota, all our church family there, and friends and family all over the place, we are so glad you are out there. We love you, and you are a wonderful part here with us. So we are thankful for you. Yes, and I'll wave at you, because I know I get several people tell me when, when I talk to them on the phone, we wave. So I'm like, I'm waving back at you. We love you. Well, one announcement. That's different, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> well, it is that uh, the offices will be closed here in, in uh, Branson and Sarasota on Monday for Memorial Day. So that's Monday, May 30th. Yes, we will, we will be closed that day. And then, did you have any birthdays or anniversaries you've celebrated this week or coming up? Let's see. Make sure I look behind me here. All right, well, let me start over here. Okay. Cameraman likes me to be organized. <gasps> Happy anniversary, 33. <laughs> Congratulations. That's awesome. Happy birthday. Wonderful. Didn't want to miss anybody. All right. Well, let's take a look at our sister. See if anybody's sister. Celebrated. See if good anybody's evening. Sister. It's always good to see you. We sure love you all. <gasps> Hi, Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. No birthday? Oh, there was one. Happy, was it a birthday? Happy birthday. Oh, there. Yes, Rachel. <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh, wonderful. Anybody else? Nope. That, that was it. All right. Well, if it's your birthday out there, celebrate. You know what to do. Eat cake. Yes. Celebrate. Have the best time. Yes, wonderful. So everybody ready? Yes. All right. Glory to God. Eat some cake. Oh, yeah. You don't get to eat it all the time, right? So on your birthday, you should eat cake. You just have a month for your birthday. All right? There you go. Glory to God. Well, it's offering time. Everybody glad to be in church tonight? Oh, yeah. Let me get a three-day weekend this week. Huh? Well, that's good. At least you get an have an extra day off. Oh, yeah. yeah, there you go. Glory to God. Extra day off is a nice thing. Thank you, Lord. Open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 9, 7. God's good. Does everybody remember that? Because I'm going to keep telling you. And I have a feeling Brother Moore's never going to quit saying it. Right? You know why? It's true. It's true. It's just true. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Second uh, Corinthians nine seven says, you know, the verses before this talk about sowing, right? Sowing, sowing big and sowing small, you know, and reaping big, reaping small. It kind of makes you wonder. Then when they throw this verse in, why why people don't think it's talking about finances, right? What what are you going to give? Right? What are you purposing in your heart if it's not talking about finances? This is a truth. This is just a truth that if you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. If you sow large, you'll reap large, right? Abundantly. And, and then every man, according to, he's, according to what he's purposed in his heart. You know, everybody probably has an amount that they wanted to give tonight. Or, but every person, what you purposed in your heart give it. Amen. Don't, don't just put it in the bucket, minister yeah. that, that, that amount to the Lord. Yes. You're, we're not giving to the church. We're not minister that amount to the Lord and, and, and give it with that willing heart. When you, when you, when you don't give, and when it's not grudging and it's not a necessity and you love giving, that ministers to the very heart of God. Amen. Amen? Amen. Because what you're saying is, I want to put this in the offering and do something for the kingdom of God. I want what, I, what, God, what the Lord's blessed me with to bless others. Amen. Amen? Amen? And that's a good reason to give. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Glory to God. When we can minister to the Lord, when the, when the Lord says, I love something, that's something you want to be. Right. Yes. Amen. Oh, yeah. If he said he loved pink dogs, I might dress up like one one day. <laughs> huh? Well, because if the Lord loves it, you want to be it. Yes. Amen? Amen. So let's all be cheerful givers as we give tonight. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, we've got projects going, but you are not projects, outreaches. You know what they are. But we'll, we'll not go through those. We'll let Brother Moore go through them Sunday. And uh, ushers, uh, wait on the people. If you want to get involved in the offering tonight by cash or credit card, raise your hand. If you're given by cash or credit card, you'll want to get an envelope. Uh, text to give instructions are here. If you want to get involved online, uh, there's a button there. You can sew lots of ways there. There's lots of ways to sow. Amen? All good ground, lots of ways to sow into it. Thank you, Lord. If you uh, make it out a check, make it out to FLC. If you want to give to one of the ongoing outreaches, go supply, word supply, mark that on your check, and that's where it'll go. If not, man, the general fund. One day we're going to be thankful when we get to heaven and we see all the things we were involved in, oh, yes. right, and that did things, and we didn't even realize all the things we got. We, we, we only saw the surface of what we were involved in. We're involved in so many things through the general fund, through the, through the God account, and how thankful it will be. We're already thankful. We'll be really thankful Amen. when we get to heaven. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Well, I think I've talked long enough. Everybody's kind of ready. Amen. Amen. Stand with me if you want to, if you're ready, if you're still writing, keep writing. Sometimes it takes a lot of time to put all those zeros in there. Amen. Right? More zeros and commas you got to come up with the more time it takes. <laughs> Start spelling out millions and thousands. And, yeah, line. glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We well, all are pretty. We must be related. Thank you, Lord. Everybody raise your offering before the Lord. Let's, let, let, let's worship him, him and our giving. If you don't have an offering tonight and you desire to be a giver, raise your hand with us. God gives seed to the sower. Glory to God. Pray this with me, Father God. Thank you for another opportunity to sow into your kingdom. We sow cheerfully, gladly tonight. We bring our gifts with a big smile. Desiring to, desiring to sow into your kingdom, into your kingdom that, others that others might know, might know the, goodness the goodness of God. We know, we know you're our source, our, source, our good supply. Our good supply. Because, of you, because of you, we'll never run short. We'll never, run short. We'll never, lack. We'll never lack. We will always have, we will always have and we will have in abundance. Have in abundance. Thank you, Lord. For blessing us and making us a blessing to many people in Jesus' name. Amen. What's happening in the Faith Life family and anyone else that would join? You know, you just would just call you family anyway, so join with us. We're getting our buildings, our lands, our houses, our vehicles, and our equipments. We're getting them. Number two. All of our debts are being reduced and eliminated. That's what we're calling them. We're calling them. You're reduced and eliminated. And glory to God. We've got extra coming in. Everybody got extra coming in? We're claimed extra. It's coming in. We're paying everything off quickly. And number three, God is bringing into our hands seed, even some great big whopper chunk seeds. And when he does, sow it with a big smile. A whopper chunk smile on her face. You may be seated.
Victory. We like victory. We just walk in it everywhere we go. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's join faith for the rest of the service. Father God, we do ask for your help for the rest of this service, Lord, that, that your word, your, your, your desire, your heart would come forth tonight. Not, not my heart, not the words of man, but the very truth of God, answers that set free, love that helps, healing that comes, Lord. We ask for all these good things tonight, Lord. We ask that, that you minister to people here, Sarasota, watching online and later on, Lord, that, that your word, your truth would help. And Lord, we purpose by faith to be good hearers and faithful doers of all the word that you give us tonight. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Aren't you glad you know the Lord? You know, you turn your Bibles to Philippians 4, 6. You look at things going on in the world. And what it should make us say is, thank you, Lord, that I know you. You know, thank you, Lord, that I have something greater to look to, to lean on, to, to uh, minister to that to minister to me and to minister out of me. I th I'm thankful that we have the goodness of God, the, the, a, a good father that we can always count on. He, he's not, he's not fake. He's not, he's not a, he's not a dream. He's real. Amen. He's real. And he's ours. Yeah. Amen. And, and we're part of the family of God. So as children and heirs, we get to receive on a daily basis, if we'll just take him up on it, all the goodness yes, that, he, that he desires for us to have. You, Amen? Amen? And so in doing that, the devil would rather us not. So he likes us to get carried away with all the things going on in the world today. Not, not just all the bad things. He'll get you carried away with the good things. Amen? But, but he wants us... To, to be full of something else besides God's word. He wants something else to block it, to keep our, to distract us, to keep our focus off. He, he, he's going to put anything in your path that he can, which is where we're starting tonight. Amen? Because, you know, there's things God told us to do, and there's things he didn't tell us to do. And, and you know, there's some things that seem really good that God didn't tell us to do. Right, and they seem like a good. It may be your your cause of the day, it, it, and it seems really good that this would be. But God didn't tell you to do it, right? Because if it doesn't minister the goodness of God to somebody, right, then then it doesn't. It has no value in the kingdom. Amen. If it doesn't take the heart of God and show it to somebody else, it doesn't matter how good it looks. It's not God. Amen? Amen. And, and there's a lot of things going on today that, that are cares that people are grabbing hold of because it seems like a good care to have. I should care about this. You know, you should care, but don't take on the care. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen? There's a whole bunch of hurting people in Texas. And, and we don't want to take on their care, but we want to care about them. Yes. Amen? Because we have... What can help? Christians, people that are full of the Holy Spirit, have what God would give them to help them. Amen? We, first of all, we have love, so we can have true compassion. Right? We have the comforter, so we can comfort those who mourn. Amen? We have what they need, but if you get involved in the other parts of it, it's just a care. Amen? It's just a care. And we don't, we don't want to get involved in those things. And there's things that he told us to do when the cares of life come. Amen? In, in Philippians 4, 6, he says, be careful for really important things. Right? Be careful if the news makes a big deal out of it. Right? If lots of people stand up and scream. Right? Right? It be, you can take that care on. As long as lots of people are screaming, that's your... You know what? It's not our care. 
We can still do what, we can still do what he says. We can pray. Amen. But 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 we don't you know because the devil he'll disguise these prayers or these cares, cares prayers not cares. We want to do prayers not cares, right? That's what we're doing. Prayers not cares. Glory to God. But the devil he'll try to disguise them into good packages. Think about stuff like this. Like people eat things that you really just shouldn't eat, right? Because somebody called them a good name, right? Like like. They, they take snails and they call them escargot. What? I ain't eating a snail, no matter what it's called. On, and people say, people say, well, it tastes good though. I don't care. It's a snail. I ain't eating it. You can cook worms any way you want. Put chocolate sauce and cheese on them. I ain't eating them and I love chocolate sauce and cheese. Amen. And, and, and that's what, he'll try to put good names on it and good intentions and, and strong arguments and, and all the good things to get you to grab hold of that care, pull it into your heart and keep it because it's good. Lots of people are screaming, it's good, right? And so he says, be careful for nothing unless you need to protest. Be careful for nothing until you make a sign. Be careful... For, you look at second. Uh, what is it? Second Chronicles, seven fourteen. Seven second Chronicles, and everybody starts quoting this when it's time to pray for the nation, right? But are they asking us to do what it says to pray? Right? It says, "If my people that are called by my name," right? In other words, people acting like me, right? People that have my spirit, people that have my heart. If they'll humble themselves, right? First, first, first thing you got to do is you got to humble yourself. If you're not going to humble yourself, you're not going to pray, right? You right? say, so, well, I'm mad. I'm just going to pray mad. No, don't pray mad. Pray humble, right? It, it doesn't say, you know, Jesus got mad one time, and then the one time he got mad, everybody takes that and says, well, that's righteous indignation. I can have it all the time I want. No, you can't. And really what he was righteously in whatever, what he was upset about was his house was supposed to be a house of prayer. prayer. Right? So what was he saying? He's saying, this ain't, this ain't right. We should be praying here. Probably that's what he gets upset with Christians about when they're doing everything but praying when things in the world are going bad. Right? They're, they're screaming. They're They're crying. And you know what that looks like? The world. That's what the world's doing. Right? We're different. We, we have answers. We have real answers. You know, I'm so thankful for our pastor that when things start going one way or the other, he doesn't react to what's going on. He proacts to God. Amen? He immediately goes to God and says, okay, what was... And then, then he comes up with sermons like he, did, like he does uh, after the election or during the riots and things like that. Why? Because God shows him exactly what to say and only what to say. Amen? Because sometimes we just say too much. We're, we're saying too much. We're, we're talking and we're making it worse. <laughs> it, it may sound good, but it's not good. If you're reacting to a care, you're not helping. You're not helping. It doesn't matter how eloquent you are. No power doesn't matter how eloquent you are. You can say it all the right ways, and it'll still be wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Why? Because it doesn't help people. If it stirs somebody up and makes them more mad, did you help them? No. no. You, you made them more mad. That, that's not going to help. Jesus, Jesus, he, Jesus hung out with sinners, right? And it made people mad. He didn't do it to make people mad. He did it because he loved them, right? Yes, right? We, we don't do things to make people mad, but that's who Jesus was. He didn't shy away from controversy. He was probably, is still probably the most political figure in all of history. Huh? And he never even participated in politics. Right? I mean, they say, you want to pay your taxes? Yeah, you should pay your taxes. Give to Caesar what's Caesar. Give unto the Lord what's the Lord. There you go. 
that's the end of my politicization of anything you've got to say to me. Amen? Amen. Because why? Because he's not going to take on the care of that. That's not, that's not why he's here. That's not what he's doing. That's not why we're here. Amen? Second Chronicles 7. If my people called by my name would humble themselves and pray. And I think a lot of people think praying is protesting. Praying is getting into politics. Praying is giving your opinion. Your ideas and opinions don't matter here. You, what you think is right or wrong doesn't matter. God knows. He knows what will help and he knows what will not help. But unless you ask, you're not going to find that out. You have to pray. And you have to pray from a place that says, I know what I think, Lord, but I humble myself to you. Because I don't want to do what I think. I don't want to react to how I feel. I want to be proactive in prayer. Amen? I don't want to take on cares that are not mine. I don't want to take on cares and, and begin to talk out, out, of, out of anger or speak out of uh, lack of knowledge. I, I want, and, and you know, you, I think so many people read that. It says, if my people will humble, humble themselves... And protest if they'll, they'll carry a sign if they'll if they'll get on a news program if if they'll if they'll have a cause. Our cause is Christ. Every day when we wake up, our goal is that somebody knows Him, knows Him better, and lives a better life because they know Him and know Him better. Amen. Amen? And, and that they they begin to walk in a light they've never walked in before. Yes. Because when we walk in that light, then it, it manifests the cares. It shows you what truly is a care, and, and it manifests what the devil's trying to do, and it shows it as the distraction it is. Oh, yeah. And what it does, because if you take on that care, you don't pray. You can't pray in care. And I don't, and I don't mean the wrong, let me rephrase that. You can't pray and take on the care. You, you got to care to pray. Two different kinds of care here. Love care and carry the care. Amen. Have anxiety. Be anxious about. Well, they're trying to do this and they're trying to do this. We've got to do this. You don't got to do nothing except for what God tells you to do. That's all we have to do is what God tells us to do. They say, yeah, but you don't realize who I am and where I've been. I got to be a part. I got to have a voice. You got to have a voice for God. Amen. Amen? Amen. And, and you're not going to walk in peace when you're in turmoil. Why? Because you're allowing the turmoil. If something's sitting there upsetting you, why are you letting it? Well, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. Okay, it's just wrong. What are you going to do about it? pray. That's what God said do about it. He didn't say do. I, I looked in the Bible. I couldn't find any other place where he said to do something else. He said pray. The church's job, the church's call, the light that we have, we are, we are to pray. We're, we're to make requests and then be at peace. We're to pray and be at peace. Pray and be at peace. That, that's what we're called to do. Now, don't get me wrong. I think it'd be awesome if good, strong Christian men and women get into politics at the Lord's leading. Don't, don't take me wrong. Amen? I think it'd be awesome if somebody that could hear from God was in a position and, hear, and heard from God. Right. Now, you talk about taking the nation in the right way, you'll take it in a hurry. Oh, yeah. Right? But I don't care if all their political views line up with you, and, but they don't know God. If you don't pray for them, you got a mess on your hands. Wow. Right. Good right? Why? Because the prayer, the prayer is what God's, if God doesn't tell us to do things that we can't have faith to do. So if he tells you to pray, you can not only pray, but you can have faith that he told you to. And it's going to be a good thing. It's going to open doors and change lives and change directions and, and cause different decisions to be made. It's going to be 
helpful. Amen? Amen. And, and, and it's not going to hurt you at the same time. Because he says, be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be, be known to God. What's he saying? Don't get distracted by all the people saying different things. Right? You got two sides and they're both so right they're wrong. <laughs> right? And man, I mean, you could, I, I guarantee you, you could flip to any news channel and just listen to them for a minute and you might think, well, you know what? That's a good point. Go back to this other one. They're talking completely against their point. You say, you know, that's a good point. You know what? You are confused. <laughs> Why? Because neither point's right. God has the answer. God and only God has the right answer, and He knows what to do. He knows how to help. He knows how to minister to those families that are now missing children. He knows how to minister to them. And He could use the church to do that, but they got to get out of all the other stuff to hear from Him to do what they're called to do. Why? Because we have the peace of God. We have that peace, the peace that passes understanding. We have that peace. And that peace is your guard. It guards your heart. What's it guard it from? Trouble and fear. Guards it from the junk of the world. It guards it from escargot. <laughs> right? I mean, little, you can take icing and put it all over a pillow and it still ain't going to be a cake. It's going to look real pretty, and you can take it home, but when you cut into it, you're eating feathers. Come on, young man. That's good teaching. We do not want to get caught up in this junk and all this turmoil. And all it will do is take away from your prayer life. Jesus got mad one time and drove people out. You, don't, you want to go through and see how many times he prayed? Way more than he drove out money changers. Why? Because prayer is where he got his answers on what to do next, on how to operate, how to react, how to not react, how, how, to, how, to, how to come up with the wisdom of God when, when the lady is thrown in front of you naked and accused of, of adultery and getting ready to be stoned. But what? He's, he comes out there and he's full of the word of God. He's been praying He's been praying, and, and this didn't surprise him. It didn't catch him off guard. It immediately, he, he, he gets quiet. What? Peace. You know, he didn't sit there and go, oh, gosh, Lord, what I say, what I say, what I say. I mean, this is right. If he'd, got, if he'd have been in turmoil, he, he wouldn't have heard from God. He was at peace. He was at peace. When things happen in our lives, we, we don't need to be surprised when, when the world doesn't like us. Jesus said they wouldn't. Right? He said they didn't like me, why would they like you? Right? The only way, they're, if they start liking you, it might mean you're acting too much like them. Right? But it doesn't mean we go and try to make them not like us. He's still set with, with, with the publicans and sinners. He, he forgave the woman caught in adultery, he talked to a woman that had been married, what, five times and, and was living with her boyfriend? Just went up and talked to her. Not only that, she was a Samaritan, right? Well, we don't do that. We don't do that. We, we have in us the same spirit in that same abundance that he had as he walked through this world. That same ability to love, to live, to bring life, not death. You know, you, you hear people all, of a sudden, all the time, they say, well, this is a life and de death situation. Choose life. Hey. Come on, God already gave us the answer to that. Anytime you're coming against a life and death situation, choose life. God gave you the answer for that every time. Every time. Well, they're trying to take this from us. They're trying to take that. Pray. Pray. You know, I saw the news um, right after they were talking about one of the issues that's going on 
in the world today. And I looked at the people protesting and there was people from both sides there, but yet they all looked the same. The only difference was their signs. They all looked mad. They all looked angry and they all looked helpless. And they all looked hopeless. Why? Because they didn't pray. They they didn't check with God to see what we do next. They didn't look to God to find out what to do where they could have peace. Because he says, if you pray, then the peace that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind. It's important to guard our heart. Where does does the devil want these cares to get to? To our heart. Right? Look at... um, Look at Mark 4. <sighs> He's helping us tonight. Yes. We're going to pray. You know what we're going to do tonight? We're going to pray. Yes. And, and when we do, we're going to expect. Yes. And we're going to be at peace. On, that, that, that the Lord heard our prayer and that He is, is making provision. He is doing what's good. He is helping where He can. He's, he's being God. Did you know that love never changes? It always is love. It's always kind. People say, ah, it was hard love. It was kind love. If it was hard, it was still kind. <laughs> right? Amen. Love doesn't change. It's patient. It's kind. God doesn't change either. And the answers He gives will never change. He's never going to stone the woman caught in adultery. He's going to forgive. Amen? Amen. It's, it's a matter of what can we receive. Right? Peace is ours. Remember Jesus said, my peace I give you, my peace I leave you, not not as the world gives unto you do I give. But then he says, let not your heart be troubled. So the the, the receiving part's on us. We can receive, you could have full peace and then let your heart be troubled and never experience the full peace you have. Because why? He gave you the peace. He said, I gave it to you. If he gave it to you, he gave it to you. You got it. Amen? Amen. But you'll never experience it unless you don't let the cares of this life come in. Amen? Amen. Mark, what did I say? Mark, Mark 4, 18. This is the parable of the sower, but we're just going to look at the one because this is the one we're dealing with. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things enter in, choking the word, and it becomes unfruitful. The ground, there was nothing wrong with the ground. There was too many other things in the ground. The ground was good, but it was full of thorns. And you can throw seed on that all day and it chokes it out. You'll never bear fruit. You'll never bear fruit when the cares of this life are chasing you down. They're, they're, they're what you react to every moment. You, you won't bear fruit. You've got to get rid of the cares to have the peace. Peace is a fruit. Right? Isn't it one of the fruits? Yeah, but you'll never experience what that fruit gives if you don't get rid of the care. We can't take these things on. They're a distraction to the gospel. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what we're here to preach. That's what we're here to give. That we're here to tell people He's good. He does good. He loves you. He saved you. He, we're here, that's what we're here to tell people. He'll help you in the most helpless of times. You know, I, I, last, uh, maybe two years ago, we had something um, in the community that happened that was, it was pretty, it was pretty, you know, it, was, it, was, it shouldn't have happened. Let's put it that way. But it did, and, and I didn't know that I knew the person that was involved in it, but I found out later I did, and I got a chance to talk to him. And I said, if you ever need something, God doesn't cause these bad things, but he sure knows how to minister to people that are coming out of them. So if you just need someone to minister love to you, give me a call. Amen? I mean, that, that's the answer. I can't fix what happened but I can help. I can help through the, through the, through the pain, Amen. over the pain. Amen? Amen? We have so much more in us than, than we let out so many times because cares, right? Or 
Well, that is, it always cares. That's, that's the thing keeping you back. Right? I mean, it's some kind of a care. Whether you care what you look like, I don't want to go up and say that. They'll think I'm crazy. They already think you're crazy. Go ahead. <laughs> right? You're one of those wild and crazy tongue-talking faith believers. Amen. You're crazy. Be who you are. Be who you are. But you're also full of the comfort of the Lord. You're also full of the love of God. You're also full of everything, the peace, the joy. You're full of the very thing that will help people in, in a time where they need help. Whether it's a Christian, non -Christian, it doesn't say go to the Christians of the world. You know, that's like teaching in your own classroom every day. No one's learning anything new because they've been in the class for years and years. Right? Take the words you know to somebody who don't know. Right? You know it, now let somebody else know it. Amen. That, that's what this word's about. It, it's not just to keep in this building. It's to let it out. Why do you think Brother Moore's going to put it in all these languages? Not just, so, not just so in case we have somebody from France come to the church one day. <laughs> right? No. So that the word can go to France, not so that France can come to the word. Amen. And th this is what we're designed to do. But, but to get the answers, we got to pray. To, to be careful, don't have anxiety about nothing, but pray. And, and don't let all the cares and the thorns and the, and the things of this world fill up your ground, your good ground being wasted. What's it do? It sucks, it zaps out all the nutrients that you needed to produce fruit. But now you can't produce fruit because you're bogged down. Amen? We don't want to be that way. Look at Luke 21, verse 34. He's helping us tonight. It says, take heed to yourself, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged. What's he saying? Who's, who's going to overcharge your heart? The devil. He, he's going to, as, as many cares as you'll take on, he'll give you. He'll overcharge you for everything, you want, everything he has. Right? Yeah, you're right. That is bad, but you ought to take this too. This is bad, but this is really bad. You're going to need both these to give it together. And then let's, let's, let's stack on some other really bad things until the cares are so heavy that you can't run your race anymore. That's what he's trying to do. If I can put enough rocks in your backpack, you won't be able to run anywhere. Amen? Amen? That's what he's trying to do. I, I just want to weigh you down. And that's what, that's what overcharge is. It's burdened with surfeiting and drunkenness. And surfeiting, I looked it up, and it just means all kinds of bad things. But why they use the word surfeiting, I don't know. Right? That's a King James word. And let's just use bad stuff. There you go. And drunkenness. And think about that. You know, you talk about the bad stuff, surfeiting and drunkenness, and then the very next thing, cares of this life. So, so the dangerous things aren't just the sin, it's the weights. Sins are bad. Weights are just as bad. Why? Because sin might keep you from doing things, but weights will hold you back from finishing your race. It'll hold you back. You know what? I don't like to run anyway. If somebody gives me weights to run with, I'm way less likely to run. Right? Here, let me stack 45 pounds on your back. Let me, let me, let me jump on you piggyback me a while. No. I don't want to piggyback these cares anymore. I want to get rid of these cares and pray. Don't pray within the cares, push them away and pray from a position, a carefree position. Yes. One that you can hear clearly from the Holy Spirit, from, from the very Lord himself on, on what to do. When, when you hear those kind of answers, you, you know that's God. Why, how do you know? Because there's no argument against it. Right? And people even try and they just sound dumb. Why? Because you're arguing against God. How dumb do you want to sound? If you're arguing against God, you're going to sound dumb. Right? 
It says, don't, don't be overcharged and, and with the cares of this life so that the day, because when, you, when, you're, when you're overcharged, when you're overburdened, when the day comes, you won't see it because you're looking at the care. You're trying to fix something that can't be fixed, right? Because God said, there are going to be wars, rumors of wars. There are going to be all kinds of bad things happening, but don't let your heart be troubled. Right? Amen. Don't let your heart be troubled. Why? Because this is going to happen. You know what? When I wasn't living for God, I went out every day and did stuff that was crosswise to God. Why would that surprise anyone? Right? Why does it surprise people when the world acts like the world? Right. Come on, young man. Good teacher. The world is the world. When I was in it, I was living the world. When you were in it, you were living the world. Amen. Right. right? It's like Jody said. He came in fresh out of the world. Yeah. He was living the world. He didn't know anything. It was right as far as he knew. But we shouldn't be surprised about the things coming when you see stuff it shouldn't surprise you the day is going to come there's going to come a day where where that sky splits amen yep. and, and and we see christ and we all leave here yeah. amen yeah. whether you leave here individually or whether we leave as a group one day you're not going to be here and all this time there's still been bad things going on right there's been wars there's been rumors of wars. There's been protests over wars. There's been protests over there. There's been boycotts. I don't really understand a boycott. You know, I don't like fish, so I don't eat at a fish restaurant. I'm not boycotting them. I just don't like their food. <laughs> Are you helping me? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I mean, don't, if, you, if, it's, if, it's, if, a, if it's a place that's ungodly, I'm probably not going there. It's not really a boycott. I'm just not going there. Right? <laughs> I mean, because that's a cause and a care. What, what if you just prayed for that place every time you went by it? Every time you went by it, I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to pray that they take bar off their sign so I can eat there one day. Right? Their food looks good, but they got bar on there. And I just know that if I walk in there, I'm going to get six pictures taken of me. Dave's at a bar. And all I wanted was a cheeseburger. God's good God. He wants, he wants his people to act and react to things in such a way that, that, that it helps a situation. It doesn't pour fuel on the fire. It begins to douse the fire. And the light of God's love shows and not the light of the fire. Amen? That, that's what he's looking to do. It, he's, he said in Romans, don't be overcome with evil. Overcome evil with good. So when, when we take on cares, we're being overcome with evil. Don't take them on. Overcome them with good. Overcome them with good. Do, go a different direction. You know, and in, the thing is, is that very verse, that very verse comes out of Romans 12, which is the, the, the chapter that starts out, be not conformed to this world. What's he saying? I don't want you to do things the way the world does it. Just because somebody screamed and yelled and got a free dinner doesn't mean I want you to do that. People, squeaky wheels get the grease is not a scripture. And not only that, it shouldn't happen. It literally should not happen. They should change the wheel. Right? Change the wheel. Get a different wheel. Go a different way. Get rid of the squeaky. What's he say? Don't be conformed. Don't be a squeaky wheel like the world. Be transformed. Renew your mind. Think like I do. Hear from me. You know, if we would hear and listen, we'd, we'd use our ears that hear and listen and, and then react out of that, we'd always react right. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. 
the church is a mighty force in the earth. Amen. Not this church, the church. This church is too. It's a part of the mighty force in this earth. If the, if the church would get out of the cares and pray, humble themselves and pray. And you know, the first thing God will say, say, well, you've been doing this. You need to quit. Turn from your wicked way. Yes. You know, I, I, all the time I'll say, OK, God, show me how I could do that better. Because you can always do it better. Yes, there's always a, there's always lo love always goes further. You think, well, man, I really love today. Guess what? You're just that far in love. <laughs> you just happen to love further than you ever did. <laughs> right. If you start loving like God, people really will think you're crazy. I can't believe you forgave them after what they did. Uh, so what my dad did. I'm just like him. Amen. But, but it's the church, when we begin to pray, it says, if my people called by my name would humble themselves and pray. In other words, not just pray at home. That's great. Yes, pray at home. Pray and seek God. Find answers. Do the things he tells you to do. Go to the places he tells you to go and, and have whatever he needs you to have when you get there. But, but the church should pray together. We should pray as one. We should pray in expectation. We should request. We should petition. And, and the Lord will grant those petitions. When you begin to pray for the nation as a body of Christ, the most powerful thing in the earth today is the body of Christ. Now, whether we walk in it or not is up to us. Whether we pray in it or not is up to us. But it doesn't take away the fact that we had the ability. Whether we used it or not was up to us. Amen? Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we... Notice he doesn't say you. He says we. What's he talking? He's talking to the church. He's, see, when I, when I was in school, I ran track because the coaches wanted to keep you busy all year so you didn't get in trouble. Right, so you, you, played a, you played football, and then you did weightlifting, wrestling, something in the wintertime that kept you out of trouble, and then you got track in the spring, kept you out of trouble. Why? Because you're always somewhere besides getting in trouble. Right? But track was an interesting sport. Because track, I threw the shot put. <laughs> you guys thought I was going to say I ran, didn't you? No. <laughs> No, no, and double no. <laughs> Fact is, I cheered on the runners. <laughs> but track, you could win individual medals and a team victory. Your individual medal was added to the team, and at the end of the whole thing, one team won the track meet. Wow. Every church is part of that track meet. They're part of that, that team. And, and, and whether they're a shot putter, discus thrower, a mile runner, a, a hurdler, they're, 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 we should run our race. We should run our race so that the whole body wins. There'll be individual rewards. When we get to heaven, we'll say, Lord, I would have not guessed he said, "Yeah, this is what you. This is your. This is your gold medal for winning that that event. But here is the trophy for winning the meet. Wow. And that trophy will be people. It'll be people. It'll be a train of people that His grace saved." That 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 we got to be a part of through prayer, and just because you prayed. Not for those people. You prayed for a nation to love God, to do the things that God asked, to serve Him and follow Him, to hear from Him. And you prayed for the leaders and, and you cared about the people. You didn't get caught up in the cares of life. You cared about the people. And it, and, and it drove you just like it drove Jesus. God so loved the world that He gave. 
And every day we give from that heart. And when we pray, we give from that heart. Because why? We want to see everyone in heaven. They may not receive it, but they're sure going to get an opportunity. Amen? Amen? Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us, what, me, you, and the church, the body of Christ, let us lay aside every weight, every burden, every care, everything that bogs you down and keeps you from running your best race, get rid of it. Get rid of it. People say, well, you got to do this. You have to do You don't have to do anything. You got to run your race. And the best way to run it, if you ever notice those really good runners, they got nothing on. I mean, they're little tuskin tight suits. That's another reason I didn't run. I don't look good in one of those. I'm pretty, but that don't help. But glory to God, they, they throw off anything that would give them a one hundredth of a second advantage. And that's what God's saying. Throw off everything that disadvantages you so that you are a lightweight. You are someone that can all, the wind can almost carry you. Why? Because I want you to run this race that's set before you. And when you run that race, when we run that race, then we win together. And the trophy is the grace of God and the salvation of many. And pulling people out of the fire and showing them there's a good God. There's people hurting today in this world. You know, people say, no, they're just mad. No, they're mad because they're hurting. You ever, you ever tried to pick up a hurt dog? Cool, you will get you. the fire be, bitten out of you. Yes, you will. He bad. He hurt. They're hurt. Mad people are hurt. They're hurt because the devil's lied to them about the situation at hand. And, and people say, well, yeah, that side's been lied to. No, you're both lied to. If you're causing turmoil, you're not helping God. Confusion and strife are the manifest presence of the devil. The Lord gave that to Brother Moore years and years ago, and it's truth. And anywhere you see it, in fact, it is in Romans, it says, stay away. And he's talking about people in the church. He said, if there's somebody that causes division among you, stay away from them. Yeah. And he's talking about people in the church, let alone people in the world. If you got a news program that every time you turn it on, you get mad, stay away from them. Yeah. They're giving you care. They're filling your heart with something that will keep you unproductive for the rest of your life because that's what the devil wants. And, and in a hundred years, nothing you care about now is going to matter except people. Amen? Let us, let we lay aside, let me, you, and every person in here Tonight, right now, lay aside the weights and the sin that so easily keeps you, holds you back from praying in faith. Amen. Amen. That holds us back from joining as one. That peace that God's talking about, it's a oneness. It's a set at oneness. It brings us to a place of oneness to where nothing else matters except our oneness in Christ. And every one of us are a child of God. And we pray from that position and he hears our prayer and he heals our land. Amen? Yes. And why? Because you, you humbled yourself. You, humble people don't take up causes. <laughs> humble people, they have a cause. It's Christ. Yes. It's God. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. I want to know him more. And, and tomorrow, you know what we should want? To know him more. And the more we know him, we want to know him more. Our excitement every day should be our excitement for Jesus Christ, our excitement for the world, for what he's done for them, if they would only hear and receive. Amen? Because that's what's going to matter at the end of the, at the, end of the track meet. 
the one that gets the trophy is the team that had the most winners, the most people riding to victory. And, 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 they, and, they, and all those team members put together with their victories and in individual events cause one trophy for the big event. And that's the event we're looking for. Amen? We're going to pray. We're going to pray right now. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. There's people hurting. There's people in Texas hurting. But there's not just people in Texas hurting. There's people all over the world hurting. And the Lord said, pray. And then he said, be at peace. He said, pray and be at peace. Pray and be at peace. And then in, in 1 Timothy 2, he said, pray for, for all men, for kings and all those in authority, that you may lead what? Quiet, peaceable life. What's he saying? He's saying pray, be quiet, and be at peace. When we pray, let's expect. I don't know. I'm not going to go watch the news to see if my prayer worked. Get the news doesn't know if my prayer worked. The news doesn't even know my God. And I want him to. Amen? Stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Just thank him for a minute. He's so good to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pray this with me. Father God, as a part of your church, as a body that's within your church, we pray to you today. We lift up our voices. And we proclaim your goodness. We acknowledge your mercy. And we receive your grace. And we pray as one. We pray from a position of peace. We pray casting off the cares. Looking unto you. The author and finisher of our faith. We pray in faith together. We ask for your help for people. We pray for men and women everywhere. We ask for your help that they'd be that their hurt could be ministered to, that their pain could be fixed. Lord, we pray for parents that have lost children. We pray for families that have wrongly lost people. Lord, we pray for your answers for these people. Send your answer in laborers, in word, in whatever way necessary that they might receive from your love and be comforted that they might receive from your love and be healed and be saved and be made free from, the, from being captive, held captive by the enemy through, through false accusations, through righteous indignation. No matter what is holding them, open their eyes. Satan, we bind you from blinding them. And we ask that their eyes be open. Lord, we pray for our leaders. And we ask that their eyes be open on both sides. That they might see the truth. The truth that makes free. The truth that brings answers. The truth that has compassion, the truth that helps. Lord, we pray for our leaders in this nation that you would help them to do their job in a way that's pleasing to you. Send laborers into their past. Send people. Send people that know you that know your truth and that are able to communicate 
your love and goodness that they might hear and do it differently. That they'd quit seeing from only their point of view, but that your point of view, that the truth would be made manifest. That light would shine in to their darkness and show them a better way, the right way, the only way that truly helps all people. We don't want one side helped. We want all sides, every person to be helped. So we pray for the church. Lord, show us where we've gotten caught up in cares and causes and we've allowed things to make us unfruitful. We pray that you would show us as a body what to do, what not to do, what to say, when to say it, when to be quiet, when to love, who to love. Lord, we thank you that you've put all your goodness inside of us, all of your love inside of us. And we pray and ask as the church, show us how to use it, when to use it. Lord, we want to be productive and effective in the world, in our states, in our cities, in our communities. We want to be effective through you. Lord, help us to see what's the enemy and to see what's truly you and to do those things that are you. That your love, your peace, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of God, the goodness of God could be manifest through us to others on a regular basis. Opportunities to know you, to know you more, to be delivered, to be healed, to be comforted, to know true peace and to have real joy. Change lives, Lord, through us. Lord, help us to realize that every day our prayer life is our pathway to peace and it's our pathway to true help in every situation going on in the world today that there's not one circumstance that you don't have an answer for. There's not one thing happening that surprised you and there's nothing happening that you're not bigger than and that your goodness and your mercy won't cover. It will cover all, recover all and help all who will come. And we pray for those we would affect that they would have hearts to receive open and ready to hear your word to put it in their hearts and to let it change their life change the way they feel about other people about other denominations about other political views it will help us help them to love in entirety that not one person would be left out because you came to save all. We desire that all be saved. Lord, we ask that you help us, help our leaders to do their job in the churches, our pastors. Lord, we thank you 
for the pastors of this church in Branson and Sarasota and online that they hear from you. And we pray they continue to seek you, to hear you, and to preach only what you've said, to minister only the truth and the real that will help and make free. Lord, help our leaders, our pastor, to continue in the path you've taken him. The light that he walks in, getting brighter and brighter. And as we follow our light, getting brighter and brighter where we can't be fooled by fake causes, by cares that are wrapped up in pretty bows. But we know what's truth and we react according to love and we walk guarded in the peace that passes understanding. Lord, give us utterance to pray further concerning these things that we might be a greater help to you in this earth. We're your body, your hands, your feet, and every part. Use us, Lord. Help us to pray further. Give us utterance in the Holy Spirit. Marandroste, Mo brastandrishne, Nerandrosoteste, No hondroste, Borandrosne, Delendishote, <coughs> Darante si brasote, Narandrondereste, Nelendrodorondoshne, Mashele, Nearo, Noronde, Shendriste, Corandrosoteste. Pray this with me. Father God, we pray for Christian leaders all over this world that have a voice in political arenas. Lord, we ask that you give them wisdom, that they seek you for right answers, that they don't be caught off guard saying things that don't help that are hurtful, that are cited. Lord, we ask for your help for them on a world stage that they present you the truth, the way, and the life that they present you and represent you with wisdom, with power, in goodness, in mercy that they would say and give answers that help in situations that seem hopeless. They bring hope. They bring faith. They bring the goodness of God and the very truth, the very answers that will help in these situations. Corum brasite eshendere mito Non draste e shate, nen deridiato, kondran dramaste, sondan diriato, shokondre, mandese, shelentre, sondroste, morandrosore, narandrasite, nelendrosote, 
nor andro shondreste, merendriske, eshendrosto, morandraste, erendrosna, brondrastiatoste. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. The most powerful thing we can do is pray. Because why? Because it ushers in the very power of God. Amen? It, prayer is powerful because what? It ushers in the very power of God. And, and, and if you pray before you speak, before you get react to something that you don't want to react to immediately, right? Sometimes I'm pretty sure that's why Jesus bent down. He didn't want to react immediately. He took a minute. He took a minute. And then he reacted. And when he did, he had a wisdom that put every stone on the ground and saved a lady's life. Glory to God. So we, we spend time praying. When, when, when you feel yourself starting to get worked up, when, when, the, when the things of life are coming at you from every direction, it's time to stop. Stop. Stop whatever you're doing and pray. And pray and seek the Lord because that's not what the world's doing. And you're going to get an answer that looks nothing like the world. He's never going to say, do what the world's doing because that's not godly wisdom, right? The wrath of man will not bring about the righteousness of God. God's a good God. It's time for the church to pray. That's what he told us to do. He told us to do it because it's powerful. It, it, it is, it, and it works. So as the body of Christ, when we begin to pray and not look at the problems, not look at what, what everybody thinks the answer is or what they don't think the answer is or what this group says or what that group says or what that, I don't care what those groups say. I love them all and I want them all to know Jesus, but I want to hear from God. And the way I do that is pray. That's the way I do it. Glory to God. You guys got a song? I'm going with you. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I lay all my burdens down. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I lay God. Well, if we start praying every time the devil starts to get us to, to be, get in turmoil or care or in the cares of life, we'll be praying a lot, right? Because that's his, that's, his, that's his mode of operation. That's what he's trying to do. Because if he can get you off base, he gets you out of the way, right? Why? Because you're unproductive. So if we start praying in faith every time we feel just that little turmoil, oh no, no turmoil here. Why? Because I got peace. And I choose to live in this peace. I choose to walk in this peace because it guards my heart. It keeps anything that might try to get my word, get my love, get my peace. It gets anything that tries to get in there that shouldn't be in there and it keeps it out. Glory to God. Glory to God. Altar care workers come down. Whew. You're in here tonight. You don't know Jesus, you should know Jesus can't imagine that you're in here tonight and don't know Jesus because you came to church on a Friday night. You, you, want, you want to know him real bad if you don't. So glory to God. 
But if you've got something else you want to shout about or, or pray about or qu any question about being filled with the Holy Spirit, something like this, these, these people pray with you, shout with you, love on you. Good peoples. Glory to God. Glory to God. Sunday morning, 9 o'clock here, 10 o'clock in Sarasota. It's going to be good. Always is. Right? We pray. We just prayed for our leader. It's going to be better than good. That's like good or rust. Right? Good or rust. Right here is what we're getting. Glory to God. Come back. It's going to be a good day. Everybody have a good weekend. Rest, relax, enjoy. Walk in peace. Walk in the light. Shine it in the world. They'll sing, we'll be dismissed. They do. Love y'all.